But the other point that you've missed, or that people missed, is that there were a huge number of spent fuel rods sitting right on top of the reactor. So when it exploded, and everybody saw it exploding, all of those fuel rods went up in the air. And anyway, as we now know, it has melted down. So I don't think it suddenly melted down yesterday. Is this I a think worst that that thing was split right from the beginning. Is, is this a worst case scenario then, as, as you see it? Or could it get worse than this? And what about the poor people that have to clean this up? They were called liquidators in Chernobyl. Even to this day, 25 years on, we're seeing uh, Japanese human beings risking their lives. Do you think anything could have been learned? I don't think anything could be done. The problem is that under those very high radiation fields, robots don't work, and they certainly found that at, at Chernobyl. At Chernobyl, they hired, they paid huge amount of money to the Germans to provide robots to go in there and remove the, the, the pieces of fuel, and the robots just packed up. They didn't work, because under those radiation fields, the, electrons, the, the electronics don't work. So you have to use people. Unfortunately, I don't think that even with the people there's much that they can do. The thing is out of control and we have a sort of science fiction scenario now. I think it's going to be very, very bad for Japan, but at the moment I don't think it's going to be quite as bad for the rest of the world. Luckily, because there's a very large Pacific Ocean between Japan and the next major landmass, although I have to say there are increases in radioactivity occurring now in California, just in the last information in the last few hours. So really what you're saying is we're not being told maybe the full picture as it's developing. And what about Tokyo? What, what lies ahead for Tokyo with its huge population. Well, uh, I've got data that shows that there are increases in radioactivity even to the south of Tokyo. So given the, the large population of Tokyo and the population in the next section uh, close to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the site, there have been exposures to radionuclides. The main problem, of course, is not the radionuclides that show up on the gamma radiation monitoring systems, but the alpha-emitting radionuclides like plutonium and uranium, because these are invisible. They, they're, they're not being detected. And I have to say that we're not being told everything. And right from the beginning, we weren't being told everything. And this is one thing that happened with Chernobyl as well. The, that, that is another parallel between these two situations, is that we don't get told anything, and, when, and, and the, the truth slowly comes out as if it's being dragged out of people. Mm. How much of a blow has this been for the nuclear industry, or is it just too difficult to say at this time? Well, I would hope that it would mean that the nuclear industry was finished. I, I mean, we can't... Uh, th this is certainly going to... In my opinion, it's going to finish the north of Japan off. I don't see what they can do about it. They're going to have a very large exclusion zone. The cost is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So the nuclear industry, I think, is finished. But then I thought that after Chernobyl, to be honest. And what happened there was that there was a massive cover-up, an international cover-up by the nuclear lobby of all the health effects of the Chernobyl accident, which is only just coming out now. We now know, as a result of research, that at least a million people have died as a result of the Chernobyl accident. Yet we still have the nuclear industry telling us that only a few liquidators died and there really wasn't any problem except thyroid cancer in a few children. And that can be cured. That was a pack of lies, and I think we're going to get another pack of lies after this, so people should watch out. Professor Christopher Busby, Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, as you are. Thanks for being on RT tonight. Appreciate it. But we have seen in the last, uh, coming up on three weeks tomorrow, we have seen since March 11th an ongoing cover-up by the Japanese government. For two weeks, the Japanese government uh, would not release any radiation numbers from the two prefectures or the two states surrounding the Fukushima 6 reactor facility. Yesterday, they, were, they reported another reactor um, seven miles away uh, is now smoking and, 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 and may be on fire. Most of the emergency personnel were pulled out more than two weeks ago. The U.S. military pulled back to 200 miles away uh, two weeks ago. Uh, last week, the U.S. military uh, said they may begin forced evacuations of U.S. personnel and citizens. And we've gotten many calls on and off air saying that, indeed, the U.S. military is going to addresses of U.S. citizens and telling them to leave. Major corporations, major media outlets from around the world, France, the U.S., you name it, have completely pulled out of Japan. The government announced two days ago that it's a maximum uh, alert uh, the greatest alert since World War II that they have been under. 
We know that at least five of the six reactors have either completely exploded, two of the internal containment vessels have been breached uh, at the number two reactor, now going back two days ago, or a day and a half ago, plutonium and uranium uh, has, 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 has leached out through the broken vessel from the huge explosions and fires and has melted through the concrete floor and into the water table below. That's why they're reporting 100,000 times safe levels uh, of uranium, plutonium, and all the other deadly uh, isotopes of uh, cesium, uh, radioactive uh, iodine. It is incredible. And our media is mainly focused on Libya, mainly focused on NCAA, mainly focused on issues of little or no significance. And because this radiation is invisible, uh, it's, it, it's being played down. But we know a huge cover-up has taken place. And we know as of a week ago, radiation had already uh, gone from Japan over the Pacific, over North America, over the Atlantic, first reaching Iceland, then England, and now uh, Western Europe going into Eastern Europe and will soon s go all the way around the globe and pass over Japan again via the trade winds and jet stream. It is in the jet stream. Uh, thank God most of it is raining down in the Pacific before it gets caught up in the winds. And it's going out over the Pacific and most of it's going in the water. Then it gets into the krill, it gets into the diatoms, it gets into uh, the plankton that is then eaten by the krill, eaten by the shrimp, eaten by the crabs, eaten by the smaller fish, uh, the anchovies, uh, then eaten by the tuna, then eaten by the humans. And it bioaccumulates all these different radioactive isotopes and toxins uh, because even if some of these isotopes decay quickly, they're still very poisonous, even when they've already decayed. And then you're going to be eating that fish, and the media, guaranteed, is going to tell you, don't worry, we're not even testing the fish. Remember what happened going back more than two weeks ago, just a few days into this. Aircraft were coming in, commercial aircraft, into Dallas, San Francisco, Chicago, and they were doing radiation testing. Now they're not even doing it. And uh, the Geiger counters would go off the chart on their shoes, particularly, and they just said, go, it's fine. We're not going to have emergency scrubbers that every city has for homeland security, uh, NBC attack, nuclear, chemical, biological. We're not going to, sorry, we're taking your clothes. We're giving you, you know, something new to wear. You got to go on this decon. We're going to scrub you off, you know, uh, with this soap. You got to get as much of this off. They're not sitting the shoes and clothes to a nuclear waste dump. They're just, come on in. Come on into America. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll confiscate your, your pocket knife, or they'll confiscate uh, your bottled water, or they'll confiscate your laptop and download the contents onto it without a warrant, uh, which the courts have ruled they can't do, but they don't care, they don't stop. They're going to stick their hands down your pants. But when you get off an airplane and they had Geiger counters and they showed serious levels of radiation, nothing's going to happen. And they're just going to let that on out to the public because that's part of the policy of, okay, it's in the milk. Okay, it's getting into the vegetables. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's in the fish. Don't worry about it. It's low level. It's not bad for you. Just like they tell the troops with depleted uranium. And they've got Ann Coulter on the fake right, and they've got George Monbiot on the socialist left calling for world government, saying, hey, we like radiation. The people of Fukushima, Ann Coulter's out there saying, should be happy. They're not going to get cancer now. There's a growing body of evidence that uh, radiation in excess of what the government uh, says is are the minimum amount, amounts right. you should be exposed to are actually good for you and reduce cases of cancer. Um, the New York Times um, science section, for example, a few years ago reported on a study from Canada um, where all these women who had had tuberculosis got an inordinate number of chest x-rays. Well, their breast cancer rate was lower than the general population. Um, the, there were um, apartments put up in Taiwan in 1993 that accidentally contained an inordinate amount of cobalt-60, a radioactive substance. After 16 years, 10,000 occupants of these buildings um, being, being hit with five times what the government says is the minimum amount you should be hit with. They're, they, the number of cancer cases they had, there were about 10,000 occupants, was only five cases. So by your account, we should all be heading for the nuclear reactor <laughs> leaking and well, kind of sunbathing out there in front of, <laughs> uh, you know, come on. Well, interestingly, 
Um, at the, it's called hormesis. That's how it appears to be pronounced. I've only read about it. Um, the beneficial effects of radiation. At a, a conference on hormesis at the University of Massachusetts a few years ago, the scientists come and talk about the beneficial effects of radiation. Then they went to a spa in Boulder, Montana, where people pay to go 85 feet into the ground, into a mine, in order to be exposed to, to excessive radiation. levels of radiation, all which right. they think it's good for you. But I don't want I want the audience to be very cautious about all this. It's all theoretical at this but point. But the but point there, is, there is that the no media doubt, will not report this. Of course not. Because yeah. Uh, really, uh, Fox News, Japan's nuclear rescuers, inevitable some of them may die within weeks. What did the plant head when he broke down a week and a half ago say? Uh, when he started crying, he said, no, there, there is super high levels of radiation. This is going to kill a bunch of people. I can't lie to you. Oh, guess where he is now? The guy that broke down, president of Fukushima nuclear power plant operator, hospitalized. He's been out at the plant. They're saying, well, we're not going to really say why, but it's high blood pressure and stress probably. Yeah, sure. And there's other reports here that the Japanese government's not releasing info, just like they did with radiation detectors for a few weeks, uh, on exactly what's happening with people who have radiation sickness. Uh, but medical facilities and shelters in the southern area of Japan are refusing the evacuees because of fears of radiation. We'll just send them to America. Here we say radiation isn't bad for you. Uh, here's the San Francisco Chronicle. Low levels of radiation found in the U.S. milk. Now remember in two weeks ago, it's almost three weeks tomorrow, but a weekend to the disaster, the Japanese government was still saying very low levels of radiation, nothing to worry about, but not releasing radiation levels from the two uh, states or prefectures around Fukushima. When they finally released it, it was 1,600 times, 10,000 times, and now, as of Sunday, 100,000 times safe levels, and we have seen uh, clear evidence of cover-ups at the hospitals with reports of the citizens uh, upwards of 50 kilometers away getting red-faced, vomiting, bleeding gums, radiation poisoning. Now we're seeing the articles. We're seeing the head of the plant break down a week ago and cry, or more than a week ago, and say that I can't be part of the cover-up. People are going to die. Now in the news today, Japan's nuclear rescuers, inevitable, some of them may die within weeks. Workers at the disaster-stricken Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan say they expect to die from radiation sickness as a result of their efforts to bring the reactors under control. The mother of one of the men tells Fox News, and that's the same calls we're getting the, the vomiting, the bleeding in the mouth, it first hits your gums, fast-growing cells. You ever burned your mouth eating pizza that's too hot and it like heals in a day, but your regular skin wouldn't? It's a fast-growing cells of the intestines and the mucous membranes in the sinus and in the mouth, ladies and gentlemen, and other areas, other delicate areas of the body. Uh, the so-called Fukushima 50, the team of brave plant workers struggling to prevent a meltdown to four reactors critically damaged in the March 11th earthquake and tsunami, are being repeatedly exposed to dangerously high radioactive levels as they attempt to bring vital cooling systems back online. I'm going to say this again. Because this is what every nuclear physicist we've interviewed has said. From Dr. Busby, a chemical physicist, Dr. Bob Bowman, three degrees in nuclear physics, former head of the Star Wars program, and many others that we've read in the mainstream press, that yes, background radiation in Europe and North America where this stuff blew over is only a little heightened, but that's the general background radiation. If one microgram of plutonium or uranium that's been splattered all over that area and ejected into the sky, that can then, uh, pieces of seaweed that dry and then get into the atmosphere, that blows over, and so the Geiger counter, and we've seen this now with the different radiation monitoring stations, they'll suddenly go from only a little bit of radiation to bzzz a lot as the piece of highly radioactive material blows by.